Welcome to Big World Introduction Tutorial Part 3, where we're going to build a chat system and get used to using console components in a GUI interface. So in this, we want to firstly create our folder based on our last attempt. So we're going to copy the client server attempt from Part 2 and rename that to our res chat underscore console underscore attempt. So you can always use these to compare with the chat console folder. Now firstly we want to create the Python class chat console. So it's under the client folder because it will be used on the client side. And it's subfolder helpers. And we're going to creating the chat console Python class. Now once we've got this, we're going to complete this Python class. And I'm going to use Visual Studio to edit this. And the main thing here is we want to go ahead and build a component that can display a number of lines of text and accept input on one line. We also need it to be visible and invisible at different points. Now because we only have one console in a client for the whole program, we're going to follow the singleton design pattern. So you can look this up, but essentially we only ever need one. And part of this, we also need the GUI components. So we're going to use Big World's GUI components to draw the interface. Now for the class, we're going to actually call it Chat Console. You can see there we also imported the Big World classes. This is so we can actually use things to send out the message to other clients. And we've got the S instance variable, which is important because this is actually the one that holds the one chat console reference, the singleton. So if this is set to nothing, then we create the chat console class. Otherwise, if it is set, then we return that. You see here the constructor also accepts a parameter, num visible lines, which is the number of lines we, we can have visible. And we can define this parameter then in the scripts config XML and change this whenever we want. Now, if it's not in that file, you can see we have put it to four. Now, for this, we've got two components, two GUI components to make up this interface. The first is a window, and it's going to sit in the background and just darken, but still be transparent over the game screen. Now, we're going to anchor this into the bottom corner so that when we resize the screen, that it automatically moves this window component to the bottom and to the left. We're also setting it so that it's transparent and just with a bit of darkening on the alpha channel so it just obscures the background. Then on top of this window, we want to actually use this multi-line text component. Now we have to make sure that we do set the parameter to multiple lines. And again, we then anchor this object within the window that we've just created. We also set the clipping of this object so that it's clipped by the window it sits within. And you can see here we're using the same anchors, the bottom and the left as well, just like we did for the window. Now with that all set up, we make sure the multi-line is set to true. And then we want to actually ensure that this component is added to the interface. So that GUI add root is quite important. Otherwise you won't see it appear. And then finally we set up the fact that it's active, we update it, and we set the height of the text component to the number of visible lines plus one. This is so that we have one line to edit the next line that we want to send out to other game players. And then we default it to not editing. So by default, the console won't be open until we open it. Now with the singleton class here, so you see we use the class method. So this one method will actually detect whether the chat console is created and return it. Otherwise, it will create it before returning it. So that makes sure there's only ever one. The editing function, which we just used above in the constructor, will actually be able to check the state or set the state. So in here we want to, if the console's open, close it possibly or 
vice versa. Now with the write command, we want to actually write out to the console a particular message. So here you can see we're actually adding the, the message to the set of lines that we want displayed in the console. And you see here if the length of these lines are greater than the number of visible lines, then we might as well get rid of it so that we don't have too many lines being displayed. And then make sure we update the component. The commit line is one where on the client side we'll call this. So we want to then, using the big world component for all players in the cell, call this say command that we're going to be constructing. Now we use the Unicode function to actually encode this string so that we can handle various different characters that we might want to send. You can then see that on the client side that we immediately display it. So we don't wait for the server to confirm, but we display it. So the server will not actually send it back to this client because there'd be no point. So we have to make sure we do that on the server side. So we'll be doing that later. Now if the update function, we can just see if it's not active, then we instantly return. Otherwise, we're going through and just redrawing all the lines that are currently displayed in the console. And then finally, we want to draw the line where we might be creating the next message that we're about to send. And here we're actually got text set to a certain color. And you can change this, just normal HTML style color codes. And then we've got the handle key event. Now this is quite important. We want to firstly uh, just check if it's a mouse button press, then we return. We also want to check whether the console is currently open and active. If it's not, then we also want to return. Otherwise, we want to process the various keys. Now, some of the important keys are like the escape. We want to actually stop editing and, and shut the console window. Or if it's the return key, then we want to see if something's actually been created. Now, if, if there's nothing, then we just close the console window. Otherwise, we actually send the message, which we use our commit line function. So there's always important so we don't send messages of zero length. And finally, the backspace key is also important. We actually will be entering a message. We want to possibly delete characters we've just entered. So handling the backspace key is important. Otherwise, if there are other characters, we just want to add them to the end of the string that we're currently entering. So making the message longer. After that, we update the component so that we'll redraw it. And that's it for our chat console class. Now we want to create the or update the avatar entity. So here we need to do things on the server side and the client side. So on the server side, Firstly, we go to our entities def, which is under the scripts folder. And we want to add the arguments. So here under the client methods, we're going to add the say command and its argument is going to be one Unicode string. And that will be for the message itself. Then the cell method is on the server side. So firstly, we need this expose tag that will actually allow clients to call this method. So if we don't have that, then we won't have any success. Again, we have the same Unicode string for the message, and then we have the detailed distance, which is 50 minute meters. Now for the cell, we need to go and update that Python script. And here we've got the name say, the ID of the client is an extra parameter, and then the message that we want to send. So here we create the string using the print command, and then we send it to all other clients. So you notice there, we're not going to send it back to the same client that just sent it. Now we need to update the avatar Python script on the client side. So here we'll import our class, our chat console class. And you see here under the helpers folder, so from helpers, 
import. And then under this, we've got the say command. And we use our write command. Right, so that's straightforward. Now, the most important part is the big world personality script. So again, whenever we create objects, we need to actually define them and for the client side, how they're going to behave. So we're going to create one global, uh, because the chat console is a singleton, one global uh, variable for it. And then in this, we create it during the init or the construction stage of the game. So here you can see we're actually getting the parameter if it exists from the scripts config file. And that's the add visible lines. And then for the add chat message, we're just going to change this now to use the console write method. And then finally, for the handle keys, we want to make sure that if they're relevant to the console, that the console is also processing key events. So here we check whether it's actually in edit mode, so the console is visible and active, and then we call its handle key event. Otherwise, if it's not actually visible, then we want to look out for the enter key, because then the enter key is going to make the console visible and go into the active editing state. Now we want to try it out. So firstly, on the server side, we use the bw underscore configure Python script to configure our res folder. We want to set it now to our res chat console attempt folder. So on my particular virtual machine here, virtual box, this is under big world tutorial res chat console attempt. Now I run Firefox, make sure uh, with the server that is the right res folder and make sure it all starts successfully. Now make sure too, and this is really important, that you have downloaded debug view and that you run it so that you can see if there are any errors, what they are. Okay, so I'm running it now and specifying the res folder. And here you see we've actually got an error. So first thing to do is you can besides reading the message, just look at what's been sent out to the debug view. And you'll see here that it's actually not finding the chat console Python class method. So in this case, you know, it might be uh, the lack of actually using WinMerge to see what's gone wrong, but there's a file missing and it's this init Python class, double underscore in front and behind of init. So I create that, it's just an empty file. Now run it again and everything seems fine. So we'll run two just to check that the messaging works between clients. We'll hit enter to bring up the console so you can see the window and you can see the input line which is a different color and it sends and uh, appears on the other client and I'll just send another message. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, part four is coming soon.